Dave, a big game on Saturday. It, it always is these days when County and Wrexham go head to head. Are these the kind of games you, you look forward to the most as a manager? Um, you look forward to all games. Ultimately, your week uh, and all the things you do during the week leads to leads to that weekend fixture. Um, but I think there's always going to be a, 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 a more of a a special feeling to the types of games where you know the atmosphere is going to be great. There's a little bit of rivalry from previous seasons. Um, a lot, a lot of state. Both teams coming into the game on on decent little runs. Um, so yeah, it, it adds to it a little bit. But I suppose we've got used uh, in a, in a good way to to big games over the past past couple of years and and, and sellouts, which will be another one at the weekend and. Um, regardless, it's still three points that are for grabs, um, and we hope to to back up what we've done over previous weeks. You can always twist stats to make them sound positive, I know, but it's just one defeat in your last six in League Two. Now you've won three of the last five. Do you feel after that that difficult start you had? Do you feel like that's behind you now? You're able to to draw a line under that. Um, well, as you say, you can you can twist things in any way in any way you want. Um, but from from our perspective, I, I just feel that what the last two wins for certain have done is is make you feel that we've probably got a little bit of what we what we deserved in terms of performances um still loads to loads to improve on loads that we can get we can get better at but you, you sort of we've i suppose wrestled momentum from going in a direction we didn't want it to to all of a sudden a, a positive slant on on things and we have to make sure we do everything we can for that to that to continue um still Go about things in a way that um, give us the best chance of best chance of winning, uh, and ultimately try and like I say back up what we we've done over the last two two sat days um, in what will be like I say a really difficult game, but a, a winnable game and a game that we'll be doing everything we can to make sure that happens. You had a, a B team fixture in the week as well away at Salford. A uh, few first team players involved in that as well. What can you tell us about that game, how that went, and how helpful that was? Yeah, it's something we've obviously. Um, as a club have, have stepped up into this this season um, and there's been B team games last last two Tuesdays I think the previous Tuesday we chose with the injury situation we had we chose not to not to utilize anybody um, but this Tuesday just felt it was an opportunity for some lads to get to get some minutes that that potentially needed it um, so all less in a competitive game uh, we played it obviously game was at Salford to play at their stadium was was great so it feels more like a a game than a a sort of bounce game, a friendly, if if you like, um, and and useful minutes for lads who needed it. We've got a similar scenario next next Tuesday, obviously with with the Tranmere game in the in the Cheshire Senior Cup. Um, we need to see where we are after after the weekend, but again, we may use that as an opportunity to get some more minutes into ones that potentially need it. Need it. It's nice to talk about some some positive news on the injury front, which was the sight of Callum Camps with the travelling squad last weekend. How? Close is he to it to a return now to first team action? Yeah, he's very close. Um, probably this weekend maybe comes too, too soon. Um, there's a, listen, we, we could we could involve him um, without question. There would be some risk, as there's some risk involved in all players coming back from injury. Um, we may look as Tuesday as just there as an opportunity to get him him some minutes and get him back involved. But he, he's he's very close, um, which again is a positive and more, I suppose as. As results have have turned on the pitch, if you like, things t- or seem to be turning in a, in a in a good place. Like you say, on the on the injury front in the main, um, great to see what's back out on the grass and Miles and and Noily, um, and and even though there's, there's positive stuff with them, probably don't expect to see them until at least until, until probably maybe second week or so in in, in October. Um, but they're all in really good places and and Berner, Probably not too, not too far behind them. So um, we'll certainly be a stronger squad um, at the end of October than we will be at the beginning of October. But there's, there's positive, uh, positive uh, shoots. Got to talk about the form that Louis Barry's in right now. Looking to score in his sixth consecutive EFL game. No county players managed that since Neil Matthews in 1991. What do you feel he's? He's added to his game this season. Uh, what do you think he's changed to, to take him to this next level, if you like? I, I don't think he's changed a massive amount. Um, he's added numbers and, and numbers. Uh, when you're at the top end of the pitch, you're always going to be judged on efficiency and goal involvement. Um, and 
even you look at <clears throat> last year where where Louis was and, and why we were so keen to, to bring him in, he's always been a dribbler. So you look at um, last year's data in League Two in terms of the top dribblers, regardless of the amount of games he played, he was in the top two of the amount of dribbles attempted per 90 minutes. And that was something that, from our perspective as a team, we wanted to try and try and add to something we as, as something we didn't have. Um, He's carried on that uh, in terms of what he does, and he's really positive in, in possession. Um, what what he's done is his goal involvement in the first three or four games was or should have been a lot higher than, than what it was. He didn't score, but he had really good opportunities and really good situations. What's happened over the last five games, like I say, is he's had them chances, he's taken their chan them chances, and he's had more, so he could quite easily have had more than one goal. Mansfield away jumps out in terms of the opportunities he had there. Um, Crawley at home, certainly. And was the same on uh, the same on, on, on Saturday in terms of situations he finds himself in. At the moment, like I say, he's doing everything right. He's getting himself in there. He's hitting the target. Um, and more often than not, he's, he's finding, the, finding the net, which is a great habit to, to, to and a great um, place to be for him. He's just got to, like I say, he's got to continue that. The way that especially this league works, um, it can be pretty transitional in terms of the ball being turned over. And the ball being turned over, the game being open, is his game. Um, because if he can get people isolated, if he can get people 1v1 or 1v2, then you'd fancy him to get, a, get himself a shot away. Um, he, ever since he came in, to be fair, the, the, the sort of him playing down that inside left channel and cutting onto his his right foot is a finish that he's had for a, for a long long time we saw that from from day one we're now seeing that um when it really matters which is on a saturday and a tuesday in in the in the football league another player who's who's received a lot of plaudits has been uh, macaulay salvam hales voted by the supporters as, as man of the match last weekend he's such a big personality in the dressing room macker and with the injury troubles he's had how pleased have you been with with his form since returning yeah, listen, Maka, um, as you say, is you wouldn't you wouldn't think it in terms of him as what you see, um, but he is a, a huge personality within the within the group. Um, every he treats every day, I suppose, like like it's his last in, in a certain way. He's the the life and soul of the of the dressing room, and um, when you consider the injuries he's had, for him to maintain that personality and that character is is absolute, absolute testament to him. He's been ridiculously unlucky um where his even the past three four years really that he's he's been victim of um some injuries that are largely not to do with with him um and, and his body sort of letting him down a little bit in terms of what he tries to do physically in a over a 90 minute game of football and probably over the course of the last three or four years he, he maybe averaged only only maybe 20, 25 games. Um, and that's something that we had to, like I say, we had to look at and, and, and he knew that. Um, but if um, if you can keep him fit and if we can get him to a point where he can get through 20, 30, 40 games, then he undoubtedly, whether playing as a as a right back in a four or as a wing back is a, is, is a threat in terms of what he provides going forward, but also what he adds defensively in terms of being able to defend and his speed and the bonus part of that is what he's like amongst the amongst the group um, in a leadership capacity just in the way that he he goes about his business so great to have him like I say have him back in back involved and um, hopefully it's a, for an extended period you know all about Wrexham of course part of that intense title battle just a couple of years ago and like County, I suppose, after a bit of a, a shaky start to life back in the Football League, seem to really be, be finding the feet now. Yeah, there's had a good run coming to it, as you say, on, I think three wins on the on, on the spin um, in terms of coming into the game. Um, I, I suppose, as as is the case with with us here, everybody knows, knows our story, everybody knows their story. Um, and a lot of people will look at it in probably through jealous eyes in terms of what it is to have uh, owners come in, um, high profile owners come in from another country and, and invest massively in a football club and invest in a town in order to try and achieve ambitions and goals for themselves. Everyone would swap, of course they would. Um, so we know exactly what they are. I think you go back to the, 
the however long it was ago, a couple of years, 18 months back. Um, there's always going to be that rivalry because both of us were, were in a shootout in a, in a league title run that went right to the last game of the season and it's decided by, by small margins. I think where you sit now is two football clubs that sit where they should in terms of being EFL clubs, um, both with aspirations and ambitions to try and climb the, the pyramid and get higher than they currently are. Um, and in probably both instances being quite public in terms of the ambition to, to be able to do that. So yeah, it, it brings lots of um, different connotations to the whole it's, it's a game of football. I'm sure that every single supporter of both teams, when the fixtures came out, were looking at um, when this fixture cropped up and when the second fixture cropped up, last one cropped up last game of the season away at Wrexham. So again, who knows what that brings. But um, regarding this one, a sellout, as you'd expect, they'll be the same when, when we go there on, on, the, on the last game. Um, Two teams that want to be at the top end of the table competing for promotion and being a League One club next year um, and an atmosphere that every single player want to play in, um, which, again, they're all looking forward to. There are big, obviously a big threat from set pieces as well. And in, going back to last season, that was a source of real strength for you in terms of defending set pieces. It seems to have been a little bit of a, an Achilles heel in terms of the goals you've conceded the last couple of weeks. Is that something you, you've, you've looked into in terms of why that might be? Yeah, listen, you make, we've made mistakes, simple as that. Um, this, regardless, if you look at what League Two is, and, and there are teams that play in, in, in different ways, fundamentally, the, the, the majority of goals in this league are scored from set pieces. That's not changed, that's not changed over the past 20 years. Um, so you need to be able to be good in terms of your set pieces and ultimately be able to deal with those sorts of things. What you're reliant on in pretty much every circumstance from a, a uh, a sort of set piece four scenario is is delivery, movement, and desire to want to go and head the ball. And on the flip side of it, when you're defending, people have to do their jobs. So people will be allocated individual roles and responsibilities, and it ultimately then becomes me or you in terms of who wants to get to the ball, who gets there. There'll be, like I said, there'll be some mismatches. We'll go into Saturday with some mismatches in terms of size, but that's no no excuse, no reason to not want to get against your man and it becomes a, over your dead body i'm going to make sure you don't get to that ball and i get to that ball before you what we've got to do is as with every game is deal with that um and then make sure we use our strengths in terms of the players we've got whether that be physically whether that be technically to make sure the game looks like a game that gives us the best chance of chance of winning um but without question is that something that we're very aware of and look to um nullify yeah definitely it is and of every game this season, the game on Saturday will be the one that will test us the most in that because Wrexham are, are very good at it. Um, whether that be free kicks, whether that be corners or whether that be long throws, um, you have to make sure that you're, you're on the ball and you know what you're doing because regardless of how the game goes, you're going to have to deal with that over the course of 90, 100 minutes. And if we do that, it gives us a much better chance of winning. Appreciate your time, Dave. Thank you. Welcome. Cheers. Thank you.